When you want to sort an array, there are many sorting algorithms to choose from. There's insertion sort, selection sort, heap sort, quick sort, merge sort, and so many others. In this video, we're going to go over bubble sort because it's the simplest one to describe and the easiest one to implement in a program. We've got an array of numbers, 5, 2, 8, 1, 9, 7, and we want to put these in order from least to greatest. Bubble sort works by comparing successive pairs of values in the array from left to right. And if they're in the correct order, leave them. And if they're not in the correct order, swap their positions. We're going to make multiple passes through the array. And at the end of the algorithm, the array will be sorted. We're going to start by comparing the first two values of the array. We see that they're not in the correct order, so we're going to swap them. Then we look at the next two. These are in the correct order, so there's nothing we need to do to those. At the next two, 8 and 1, those need to be swapped. And then the next two, 8 and 9, those are in the correct order. And then 9 and 7, we'll swap those. At the end of one pass through the array, the largest value, 9 in this case, has found its way up to the top of the array. This is why it's called bubble sort. As we make passes through the array, the largest value will find itself, or bubble, its way towards the end of the array. Let's make another pass through the array. The first two elements, 2 and 5, are in the correct order. 5 and 1 need to be swapped. 5 and 8 are in the correct order. 8 and 7 need to be swapped. And then 8 and 9 are in the correct order. Another pass. 2 and 1 need to be swapped. 2 and 5 are in the correct order, 5 and 7, 7 and 8, 8 and 9. Now at this point, the array is sorted. But in the simplest version of this algorithm, we would make a total of 5 passes through the array. That would guarantee that the top 5 values would bubble into the correct slots, and the very last value would also be in its correct slot. Let's take a look at the code that would implement the bubble sort algorithm. I start by defining the array. I've got 6 numbers that I want to sort. The actual algorithm has two loops, one nested within the other. The outer loop controls the number of passes through the array, and the inner loop controls each individual pass through the array. Both of the loops go up to the size of the array, minus 1, because as I'm looking at pairs of values, I don't want to go off the end of the array. The very inside of the inner loop looks at a pair of values, and if they're in the wrong order, it swaps them. After sorting the array, we've got one final loop to display to the user. Let's compile and run the program. And we can see that the array is now sorted. There are some optimizations we could do to the algorithm. For example, we could stop swapping when we know the array is entirely sorted. If we make a pass through the array and we make no swaps at all, then we know that everything is already in order. Another optimization would be to have our inner loop go not quite as far on every iteration because we know that everything to the right has already been sorted. But the concepts are the same. You're making multiple passes through the array, looking at successive pairs of elements, and then swapping them if they're out of order. Now let's take a look at bubble sort, but with strings instead of numbers. This one is very similar, but we have to rework it to use the string functions. First, we define our array. This is a two-dimensional array of strings. All the strings are the same length. Then we go into the same loops we had for the other bubble sort, but we're using string compare in order to look at the pair of values in the array. And then we use string copy in order to swap them. Finally, we print out all the values of the array. Let's compile and run it and see that it works. And there we go. All the strings are in order. In both versions of the program, there was a comparison between a pair of values and then a swap. In the numeric version, it was using less than or greater than, and the swap was done using the assignment operator. In the string version, we use string compare, and then to make the swap, we use string copy. But the concept is the same. So really, the only difference between the two versions is what operators we use in order to do the comparison and the copy. There is a built-in library function called QSort. It uses the quicksort algorithm in order to sort the array. But in order for it to work with an array of numbers or strings or floats, 
it has to abstract the idea of comparing two successive values and doing the swap. In another video, we'll learn how to use the QSort function and see how it's able to sort any kind of array. In order to do so, it needs to know how to compare two values so that it knows whether to swap them or not. We'll see how that's done.